So you want to be a computer engineer. After all, fusing electrifying circuitry with the unstoppable force of software yields a skill set crucial to the devices powering our modern world. Let's debunk the public myths of what it means to be a computer engineer and give it to you straight. This is the reality of computer engineering. First of all, you might be asking, what is computer engineering? Computer engineering is a dynamic field nestled right between the colorful hardware of electrical engineering and the vibrant practicality of software engineering. These engineers were integral pieces to everything from the historic moon landing in the summer of 69 to the convenience and versatility of the everyday device you're watching this on. Which is awesome! But what do computer engineers actually do? Besides emailing memes back and forth, computer engineers use their meticulous programming, hardware, and computer systems knowledge to design everything from the minute details scattered across networks of immense scale to the connective networks themselves. But most often, you'll find them working on what we're calling computers. But wait, what do we actually mean by computers? If you think you know the definition, well, pause the video and leave your guess in the comments below. If you said something like your smartphone and laptop, you'd be right. But it goes a little deeper than that. A computer is defined as a machine or device that performs processes, calculations, and operations based on instructions provided by a program. Hmm, so a Nintendo Switch is a computer? Traffic lights? Digital cameras? ATMs? Even drive through posts at McDonald's? Well, absolutely, yeah. Each is a computer made by computer engineers. But what's much more interesting is how these engineers actually develop each individual computer. But before we get into the fascinating details, we need to build a base level knowledge of the field. To do this, we'll take a look at the university coursework that prepares each and every engineer behind these ingenious products. As you now know, computer engineering fits in nice and snug between the software and electrical engineering fields. Not surprisingly, their course load reflects this and pulls not only from circuits and electronics, but programming structures, systems, and algorithms too. To best devour this, we'll divide the curriculum track into three parts. Introductory topics, computer foundations, and the final concentration path. Let's see how it all comes together. As with most engineering majors, you'll hit the ground running with math, physics, and gen ed courses. Just in case you're new here, we always tell students to take these classes very, very seriously. The pace of these physics and calculus courses specifically shocks students so much that the majority of engineering dropouts are actually here in this first stage. Check the description below for the best insider resources to navigate these pitfalls. The most important courses in this first stage are your introductory programming in electricity and magnetism physics courses. No matter what career path you take in this field, these topics will follow, so it's best to start building a strong foundation as soon as possible. And now it's time to break out that sweatband because it's time for the Computer Foundations courses. These provide a baseline of all of the computer topics that you'll need to launch into any concentration path toward the end of the degree, starting you off with some hardware the circuits classes brings power to your life through AC and DC analysis in all types of RLC circuit schemes. After this, you'll build right into the digital domain. And no, it's not like the matrix. All right, it's kind of like the matrix. The digital circuitry employs a simple twist. Instead of having continuous signals, they have discrete on or off signals. This opens up possibilities for handy circuit components like logic gates, muxes, and flip-flops that enable the efficient and powerful computing of today. But the best part about these classes is that they have corresponding lab courses that allow you to experiment with all types of circuitry and lab equipment that you want. But the applications don't stop there. You also get to start simulating circuits and programming logic and the physical ones and zeros onto chips, which already creates a dogpile of competing hard skills for your resume. Another interesting and extremely useful course is computer architecture. This class teaches you all of the computer need to knows CPUs and memory, parallel processing, data transfer between devices, and other imperative information. Now let's touch on the software side of the degree. Data structures and algorithms will teach you how to sort, store, and manipulate the world's precious data that fan companies simply can't do without. Make sure to pay attention here because these topics always pop up in software-related interviews. Besides that, you'll diversify that coding portfolio with Python, C, and C++ classes, providing you with all the software tools you need to develop computers and related systems. 
And then you'll take a student favorite embedded system design class, which is chock full of real world skills. Embedded systems is the single most popular career path out of a computer engineering degree. And this course is an all inclusive introduction to it. Microcontroller use, embedded architecture, development tools, memory organization, peripherals, and a ton more. And the best part, you use it all right away as you design a system while you learn in class. Now, you only have one thing standing in your way of walking that stage and hoisting up that acclaimed degree. The final concentration path. Will you choose the networks concentration where you design protocols for the network layer of the software stack? Which is just a really fancy way of saying that you'll deal with intricate communication between devices. I mean, come on. How cool would it be to design the network that controls a fleet of drones putting on a modern day fireworks display? Maybe you like this idea of dealing with systems but are more interested in the computer side of things. No problem. Check out the computer systems track. This connects a number of different technologies together, like the array of hardware that controls the rotors and LEDs on each of the drones in our light show. Maybe that system level connection excites you, but you're much more proficient with software rather than hardware. No matter, consider the system programming path. Looking back to our colorful drones, the system programmer would create and or implement the operating system that runs on these drones, ensuring that the most efficient transmission of data from the host computer to each drone runs flawlessly. Further, these engineers could also be responsible for implementing the actual algorithms that make up the captivating show that the crowd just can't get enough of. And the fourth and final copy concentration is digital hardware. These engineers use programmable logic to act as electrical brains controlling circuitry. An engineer implements PL in the firmware of each drone so that when our system programmer supplies the drones with specific control signals, they will fly up and the LEDs will shine red or fly left and blue with a different control signal. This is a highly sought after skill in today's world and necessary in every computer as we defined in the beginning of the video. If you want a deeper dive on the computer engineering program, Keep an eye out for the detailed map of this college curriculum coming out soon. That's what you all voted to see. Make sure to subscribe so you too can decide on what we post. And with that, you've completed your computer engineering degree and are ready to start your lucrative, successful engineering career. But which career will you choose? What options are even out there? This next part details exactly that, the lush computer engineering career landscape. After that, we get into the single most important thing you need to know before you start a computer engineering degree and career. Make sure to stay tuned to not miss it. Our first career is an exciting one, and the reason many get into computer engineering in the first place, computer hardware. These engineers employ everything they've learned in circuits and computer architecture classes to design hardware on all different types of computers. You could be designing microcontrollers, PCBs, sensor interfaces, and a ton more for anything from gaming rigs to Apple's next-gen AR headset to life-saving medical devices. The possibilities are truly endless. Another popular path out of a computer engineering degree is to get into digital signal processing. Signal processing is basically a software engineering job that requires in-depth knowledge of electrical signals, a perfect mix for a computer engineer. If you've never heard of it, this career is primarily manipulating data to better understand a bigger picture. This could be restoring old photos, enhancing speech recognition, cleaning up a telecommunications wave, and even analyzing variations in heart rate. The possibilities and fields of application are again limitless here. But wait, there's more. Computer engineers can also go into network engineering, which deploys a system level perspective to connect a number of computers. This groups computer interfacing, systems, security, and more all into one bundle to create an efficient interconnected web of computers. Besides the drone show example from earlier, this could also be a host computer controlling an entire manufacturing line of Teslas or the Facebook network that connects literally billions of people. Now make sure you're sitting down because we arguably save the best for last, embedded systems in software design. Like we mentioned earlier, this is the single most popular path out of college for computer engineers and for good reason. It's basically designing a mini computer system. These engineers plan out and construct most or all of the software, firmware, and hardware of a computer-like system. This could be choosing space-grade hardware capable of receiving and processing a signal in low Earth orbit, the firmware that controls the hardware, and the software that oversees the entire operation. 
Since this is such a dense and interesting topic, we already have a video in the works that specifically dives into the embedded systems engineering career. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And there's your overview of the computer engineering landscape, which means it's finally time for the key advice that every computer engineer needs to hear, directly from successful computer engineers themselves. This advice pertains to the CompE cage, which you may or may not have heard of. Here's the concept. Computer engineers have one foot in software and one in electrical. They're half as good as they could be in either field. They'll always be at a disadvantage when competing for software and electrical specific jobs. They can only get a job in the short list of fields where they have a real advantage, like embedded systems. This idea of being constrained to a few select careers is what we call the comp E cage. While there is some truth to this statement, you must know that no matter what degree you graduate with, there is success to be found where your passion lies. Will software engineers on average have a leg up on computer engineers for pure programming careers? Yeah, of course they will. But at the end of the day, the most skilled, passionate, personable, and above all else, qualified candidate gets the job. Whichever path you end up choosing, if you put in the work to qualify yourself and do everything in your power to achieve your dream job, you can and will make it. We see it happen all the time. Want to know exactly how to become the best engineering prospect so that you can enter the career of your dreams, whatever it is? Watch this video walking you through our best methods.